you're new here, I am currently in recovery from anorexia. So today's video is, I'm just going to put a trigger warning in the start because I will be talking about anorexia in a bit more detail today and sharing some of my own experience. I'm wanting to do a video, um, a couple of videos on understanding anorexia so we can share it with people who are in our lives who might be helping us through this and help raise awareness and help people understand what anorexia actually is. So today's video is a bit more of a serious one and anything I say on here um, is just based on my experience and my research. I did used to be a dietitian many years ago so I do have a background in health science and um, you should always talk to your treatment team and consult a medical physician before doing anything or if you're concerned about someone. I'll put up a list of um, helplines at the end of the video as well but I just wanted to preface this and say this does not replace medical advice it's just a way to share some information so yeah it is a bit more of a serious video and I'm still gonna be having my snack in it which I'm just gonna go get ready in a second and we're gonna talk about um, the basically understanding anorexia and I've chosen just to focus on anorexia because that is what I suffer with um, and I can't speak for people with other illnesses with other eating disorder types so um, Sorry about the noise, but um, yeah, so I'm going to go make my snack and today's video we're going to talk about understanding the biology and the science of anorexia. So this is the hard facts. Um, so hopefully it helps you with your understanding and even if, if you're a sufferer as well like me, sometimes knowing the science behind it does help. So I'm going to go make my snack and I will chat to you in a minute. Alright, so I've got my soy coffee here and I've got my little granola cookie for my snack today. So I think I'm just going to like eat and chat while I do this because it is a pretty heavy, heavy like um, topic. I even have notes and stuff. I wrote notes out for this because um, I wanted to get everything right and try and cover as much as I possibly could. But yeah, just again, um, this is just me sharing information. It does not replace um, advice of your treatment team or medical advice. So if you and also if you're feeling that you're not ready to listen to this um please don't watch it um it might be a bit triggering um just hearing about some of the the science behind anorexia but um yeah so i guess we'll just get into it but i'm gonna have a little bite and a sip of my coffee first all right so I wanted to share the history of anorexia as well because I think it's important to know that this isn't a new disease. It's not something that's only just come up in the in the modern days. Um, there's evidence from the 17th century and it became a recognised disease in the 19th century and they do believe it stems from fasting and religion. Um, but yeah, anorexia nervosa, the disease, has been around for a very long time. And that's not to be confused with the symptom anorexia, which actually means lack of appetite. Um, we used to use that in dietetics to describe sometimes people who didn't want to eat. But anorexia nervosa is a severe mental illness. So yeah, um, it's been around a long time. And so you can't go around and blame people for developing it now because we literally have been wired to have it. So what exactly is anorexia? It's a severe mental disorder characterized by restrictive eating that leads to the person being un unable to maintain what is their healthy body weight. Um, they often have an intense fear of gaining weight and a highly disturbed body image. Now, in the DSM-5, which is the diagnostic criteria, um, I do know there is a weight criteria for anorexia nervosa, but we know that, you know, you can be anorexic at any weight. There is, the weight criteria should just be thrown away. You do not need to be underweight or severely underweight to be diagnosed with anorexia, and that's what big misconception people have. Um, you can still have all the symptoms. It is a mental illness. It is what's happening in here determines if you're sick or not, not what's happening here. And sometimes I feel like people who are in bigger bodies that suffer from anorexia nervosa, it's really hard for them to get a diagnosis because not everyone with, an anore with anorexia will be underweight. And that seems really unfair. So there are two recognized subtypes of anorexia, the restrictive and the binge purge one. So the restrictive one is where the individual restricts their intake of food and the binge purge is where they might eat what seems like an enormous amount of food and then purge it either by vomiting or laxative use or even exercise. Um, 
Anorexia makes up about 1-2% to of all eating disorder diagnoses. It is not the most common eating disorder to have. Um, I do believe binge eating disorder is the most common, as well as bulimia. Don't quote me on that though. And only 6% of sufferers with anorexia will actually be underweight. So that's a very small amount of people who will actually meet the BMI criteria for anorexia. And I think the biggest thing is that knowing from the history and the science, it is not a lifestyle choice. This is not a choice to get sick. It is a life-threatening disease. So if you're around someone who does suffer from an eating disorder, just try to remind yourself that they didn't choose this. They didn't choose this life. Yes, we can choose recovery and we can choose to recover, but we didn't choose to develop the eating disorder in the first place. Um, so there are two um, sub further subtypes of anorexia that um, I don't think, I think one of them is formally recognized. So you've got atypical anorexia where the person has all the symptoms of anorexia, but they're not classes underweight. And then you've also got orthorexia. So that's the obsession with clean and healthy eating. So I know myself, I struggle a lot with orthorexic tendencies and I still do to this day, which is why I make a point of making myself have things like cookies and chocolates and stuff and ice cream every day because I want to break those orthorexic tendencies because it's still a, an eating disorder, even if you're eating clean. And I always get concerned when people like tell me they're eating only clean and skipping sugar because I just go straight to that's orthorexic. So anorexia manifests differently in everyone and someone can be suffering without meeting the full criteria. And that is super important to remember. You don't know what's going on in someone's head. And I find it so awful that so many people aren't getting the help they need. They just think, oh, this is just normal, like, because they're not meeting like a weight criteria. So I was only diagnosed in 2020. Um, I'm 26 now and I had symptoms since I was 13 but because I wasn't meeting all the criteria I wasn't super underweight I wasn't the behaviors weren't very obvious everyone just put it down to clean and healthy eating um, no one noticed it so I went over 10 years without diagnosis I've had this disease for going on 14 years now and I'm so sick of it but it's just I think it's so wrong that it's not recognized and yeah, um, this is why the, the diagnostic criteria in the DSM-5, which is like the psychiatric manual of diagnoses, isn't the be all and end all. Like I said, someone can be suffering and you wouldn't even know. Um, it should definitely be assessed on an individual basis. And if someone you know is suffering from anorexia, don't comment on their weight. They, they don't need that. Um, you know, if you, I had people that used to say, you don't look anorexic, so you can't have it. And anorexia doesn't have a look. It has a stereotype, which is different, which is being made worse by media and dramatization in movies and stuff. But anorexia doesn't have a look and you need to remember that. It's what's happening in here determines how sick someone is. So the next aspect of anorexia I wanna talk about is the biology and symptoms of anorexia. So our bodies rely on nutrition to fuel us, all our organs and especially our heart and our brain. When a person is malnourished, however, they have difficulty regulating their emotions and often a lot of cognitive impairment because the fuel's not getting to their brain. So you might notice people that you know suffering with an eating disorder, they don't think clearly. Nothing they seem to do seems logical and that's because their brain is starved and it's not functioning properly. So you can't hate them for that. They literally cannot think straight. Um, so this can manifest in many different ways, but difficulty focusing and making decisions is really common. I know I struggle making decisions like the simplest of decisions, like which t-shirt should I wear today? Um, a starved brain can't function. So it's important to keep that in mind when caring for a loved one with an eating disorder. So I know it is so challenging to care for someone with an eating disorder, especially when they've got all these irrational thoughts coming in. They don't seem to just really be with it. Their memory might be shocking. You know, so much can be happening, but they are sick and they need your support and care. They don't need to be told they're being stupid or being dumb or acting like an idiot because they're sick. And that's super important to remember. So their brain is struggling and they can completely change their personality. Like I said in an earlier video, it's like being possessed. I lash out in ways I didn't even know I could do because of anorexia. Like it completely switched me as a person. And even now I still don't really know who I am or what my personality is like because of anorexia. 
So this whole starvation in the body is known as starvation syndrome and it's the body's physiological and psychological response to being starved. All that comes in goes straight to vital functions such as the heart and will even switch off what it deems unnecessary such as reproduction. So a lot of um, females lose their period or not get it at all um, because the body deems it not healthy enough and you don't have to lose your period in order to be severely sick. Some people are severely underweight and severely sick and they still get their period. So that is not a marker of sign of health and illness. It's different for everyone's body. So a person doesn't need to be underweight to be in starvation syndrome either. So common symptoms include, but are not limited, so physical issues, so heart issues, slowing metabolism, feeling cold, edema, dizziness, high fatigue, hair loss or dry skin, decreased hormone, hormone levels and decreased sex drive are really common physical symptoms. Um, the emotional symptoms often include depression, anxiety, irritability, loss of interest in life, thinking, so impaired concentration, um, judgment, decision making, um, impaired comprehension, um, increased rigidity and obsessional thinking, as well as reduced alertness. Um, so as I said before, like my brain is still super foggy and I can't even remember what I did yesterday, let alone <laughs> stuff for uni exams. So, you know, this starvation, is, it's a serious thing and it's a serious problem. So if someone you know is in it, try and be kind to them, please. Um, social symptoms can include withdrawal, isolation, loss of sense of humour, feelings of social inadequacy, um, neglect of personal hygiene, um, strained relationships, and of course there's the eating symptoms. So thinking about food all the time um, is actually a symptom of starvation syndrome because your brain's trying to tell your body to eat, 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 we need fuel, we need food. Um, planning, meal planning obsessions, eating very fast or very slow, handling food like picking up food and breaking it apart. Um, or hoarding food like I know I've got some of these symptoms still so um, and someone might have some of these symptoms someone might have all these symptoms or some of them some people with starvation syndrome might have none of these symptoms again it's to be treated on an individual basis but if you know someone who is showing symptoms of this do get them to get checked out because we know that catching the eating disorder early is key to um, recovery like the earlier the intervention the better the recovery chances are so don't take 14 years like I did. So in regards to starvation syndrome, I just wanted to share some of my experience with it. And honestly, I actually, we still believe that I'm still experiencing symptoms of starvation syndrome because I was malnourished for such a long time and it's really slow to come back. So um, one of the biggest things I've noticed lately is I don't find things funny. I used to laugh at everything. I can't remember the last time I laughed properly. And it, it's really sad to think about it that way. Um, it's just, this disease is so cruel what it does to people. And we would never, ever, any sufferer would never wish this disease upon anyone because it is so hard to have and it is so hard to get rid of. And this is why it's so important to understand what is happening in the body. So basically, everything starts switching off the more that, that starvation occurs and only vital functions are happening. So memory, um, cognitive decision making, all of that stuff, the brain doesn't have enough fuel to make it happen, which is why people with anorexia can come across quite boring and bland and flat because we've got no energy to do anything. And this I know can happen in all forms of eating disorders, but I'm just talking about anorexia here. Um, so yeah, my experience is even now I still like, I have the worst memory and my anxiety is through the roof all the time. Um, I struggle a lot with um, compulsive movement as you probably can be aware of sometimes. Um, I know that I still pick apart my food without even realizing it. And some of these habits and behaviors are so ingrained that I don't even realize I'm doing them. So I need people to point them out to me um, because yeah, I don't even recognize what I'm doing. And like I said, sometimes the, you get pretty much possessed by anorexia um, to do things that you don't wanna do. But the good news is that starvation syndrome can be reversed. Um, once nutrition is restored to the body and by an adequate intake, um, you, the starvation symptoms start to disappear. Like I do notice I'm smiling more, like as I eat, get re-nourished, um, and I'm not as tired anymore. Um, my thinking is getting clearer. It's still not there yet, but um, 
Reversing starvation syndrome takes time, but it's not impossible. And it should be done, done underneath a treatment team with, um, sorry, with medical monitoring. So this is just part one of this video. I am gonna do a second part where I'm gonna look more at the psychological aspects of anorexia and share some things that people um, who suffer from anorexia want you to know so you can help them through it. We know it is such a challenging disease and we know being a support person for someone with anorexia is, is just extremely difficult or someone who's sick in any way or form. But I just hope that understanding a bit more of the science behind it helps you not hate the person, just hate the disease because it's not the person's fault. Um, they do need to make steps in recovery for themselves, but it is not their fault they got sick. It is not your fault they got sick. Um, I think it's also important to know that there is a genetic basis in um, anorexia as well. They are finding that um, people do have a gene to develop anorexia. So um, basically, was it nature loads the gun, but the environment pulls the trigger and you know, eating disorders are coping mechanisms. And like for me, I was 13 at the time when my first started developing and the only thing I could control at the time was food. So that's why my brain went to restricting food and engaging exercise behaviors and stuff like that. Um, it is a coping mechanism. It is not about weight. It is not about shape at the end of the day. I know it seems like that on the surface level, but deep down the problem isn't that at all. But I'll definitely get more into that um, in the next video. So I hope this has helped. I hope you understand a bit more about anorexia and the science and the history of it. Um, I know it was a bit more of a serious video, but I think it was well needed. So I'm gonna end it there and um, yeah, just stay strong. You can do this, we can do this. Um, and thank you to everyone who's supporting us as well. And just thank you for everyone who's supporting me as well. You guys have really made me want to keep going and keep fighting. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll probably put out the second video um, very shortly because it kind of ties in really nicely. So I love everyone loads. Take care of yourself. Take care of your mind. And I will see you soon. I just wanted to add that if you or someone you know is struggling with an eating disorder or disordered eating or you're just not sure if you're struggling, please seek help regardless because this is a life-threatening disease. It can kill and it does kill. And I'd hate to think that someone's out there suffering just because they feel like they don't meet the criteria. If you have any issues with food and body image, please seek help because it's it's not worth it. You You deserve to live a happy life and you deserve to enjoy food. So... Yeah, I've put a list of resources um, in the video as well, um, links to helplines and stuff. So please do seek help. Um, a really good place to start sometimes is just by going to your GP um, and talking to them about how you're feeling and talk to your loved ones as well. Share how you're feeling and get treatment if you need treatment because this disease sucks. And like I said, it can kill. So I just want you to know that there is help out there and we just need to remember that.